we have here some of the most horrible invasive aquatic plants that you can imagine. The state of Florida has spent zillions of dollars eradicating these or attempting to eradicate these because they're not able to do it. But since you can't actually beat it, you might as well learn how to work with it. And I think that this plant is a major gift to gardeners and especially permaculturalists and composters because it is a very good nutrient accumulator, high in protein, it rots down, and it feeds the ground, and so today we are going to use it for just that. So what is this plant? This aquatic scourge, this terror of tropical climates. This is the water hyacinth. It's actually a very beautiful plant. The problem with it is, from what I've read, it can double its population in every nine days. So this is the tribble of the plant world. And it's very pretty. So the reason it's ended up spread all over the place is because people pick it up and they plant it elsewhere. And it gets in the lakes and it makes big floating mats that make it really hard to get through and clog up motors and all kinds of other things. So um, because of its beauty, combined with its incredible ability to reproduce, the water hyacinth has become a total pain in the neck. This is a three bin composting system, which I helped rebuild for a resort and this is the bin that is currently in operation there's uh, restaurant scraps going into here into here and a lot of uh, yard waste so you can see it's kind of dry because there is no water over here ironically there's a pond right there but we don't have a pump or anything coming up to it and apparently there used to be water catchment on the edge of this which there should be again but well um, we don't have the budget and I haven't been approved to build it. So what I've been doing is taking the water hyacinth and throwing it on top. And the thing is, is water hyacinth here is filled with lots of water. It's an aquatic plant. And when it comes out of the water, it dies. It needs to be in constant moisture or else it gives up. So we pull it out of that mucky little section and then throw it up here and every time you make a layer of it here it's both a green activator and it is a source of water so as it deteriorates it basically turns into like a black brown slime which is full of nutrients and it's also got a ton of water in it so by throwing it on here we are putting water onto the pile and we are adding uh, an extra source of nitrogen and nutrition another great thing about these plants is that they clean up water systems. So if you have, you know, a lot of people are concerned about how much phosphorus ends up coming out of uh, farmlands and messing up the um, water supply. And same thing with nitrogen. Water hyacinth is a fantastic plant for taking that extra, extra minerals out of the water and cleaning the water up. So it'll, it'll clean the water. It can also shade and reduce mosquito populations. And so, what we're doing is we're taking these nutrients that they've pulled out of this pond here, which is green and scummy and needs more water hyacinth, and throwing it into the compost pile, which it will then get spread around the gardens and the fruit trees. I deliberately reintroduced water hyacinth to this pond area after they had been taken out some months ago. At one point, they covered the entire pond, and uh, I was hired to kind of take things back to a permaculture route, and I said, hey, what about those water hyacinths that are in the drain? Why don't we put them back in the pond? And the gardeners were like, no, we had to clear all those things out. I said, well, what's the, what's the downside of having them cover the entire pond? And they said, well, they cover the entire pond, so we didn't want them to cover the entire pond. I said, well, why don't we just take them and use them for fertilizing the entire rest of the place? And this pond is just a drainage retention area. There's a uh, drain that comes through over there, and it fills this up with a lot of runoff from the rain. So we might as well just use this space. There's not really a downside if it's covered. Uh, we just scrape it every once in a while, pull the extras and throw them into the compost pile and we've got free fertilizer. 
as, as it was, they were um, buying fertilizers for this whole place. It's about five acres and multiple villas and a marina and all kinds of stuff. And uh, I said, you know, if we could just get the water hyacinth going, we don't have to buy fertilizer. So maybe I'm crazy and maybe the gardeners are right. But I love this stuff. I like how scary and invasive it is. So once all this rots down, it becomes compost. It goes from being a pest that can take over a lake to being really good food for gardens and for fruit trees. And you saw me in a previous video uh, feeding it to a couple of key lime trees and just throw, you can just take these guys and throw them on the ground right around your fruit trees and it will feed them wonderfully and water them at the same time. So this is going to be our compost activator. I'm going to take a few more wheelbarrow loads and load it up. I thought you guys might want to see that. You don't need to uh, add any special stuff to your compost pile to uh, activate it, like you don't have to buy anything. Some people say you could pour beer in it or pour urine in it and all that works, but if you have a source of water hyacinth, this stuff is the bomb and it has a great upside along with the invasive downside. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check me out on the web at thesurvivalgardener.com and until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I went to see David David the Good We listened to Portis Head and drink spiced rum. Oh, and along with the water hyacinth, my son caught some little fiddler crabs of some sort. Jumping crabs.